A couple of quick shout outs to our sponsors. We want to thank Shell, the festival's presenting sponsor. We also want to thank Acura, People's Health, Miller Lite, Coca Cola, the Fairgrounds Race Course and Slots, Sheridan New Orleans Hotel, and the Schwest family, as well as the many others with their presence around the grounds. We do rely on the support of these sponsors so that we can bring you the very best talent year after year. So if you enjoy what you see on the stage today and around the grounds, you can thank our generous sponsors. I want to let you know that we do have various t-shirt booths all over the, uh, the festival grounds so you can get your souvenirs. We also want to thank Bayou Wear uh, Clothing for the 2011 limited edition silk screen poster, which is a portrait of Jimmy Buffett by Garland Robinette. And this year's Congo Square poster by Kenneth Scott Jr. is a portrait of Fats Houston. Bayou Wear Clothing features the majestic Louisiana Pelican. Posters and Bayou Wear are available in the large poster tent near the flagpole in the middle of the fairgrounds. So, without further ado, I want to go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Dave Margulies and members of the Radiators. Give it up! Hi, y'all. What do you want to say, Dave? Long ago and far away, in a magical kingdom. So, so when did you start? Shh, 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 he's thinking. <laughs> he's trying. <laughs> We've done a lot. <laughs> Thanks to everybody for coming in to the uh, air conditioning. <laughs> we're here to uh, we're here to celebrate the legacy of the radiators in 45 minutes to cover the timeline. And that's like inviting someone to a crawfish boil and saying, you can eat three crawfish. So we're going to try and cover some, ground, cover some ground in 45 minutes. Maybe we'll start with a song and we'll go into some words from there. Song? You didn't say anything about song? Just kidding. It seemed like you guys have been tuned in like that ever since the beginning when you first started playing. It's like five thumbs on a, I mean five fade away, full fade away, five thumbs on a hand. Yeah. That's us. That sounds good. Is that a snack food? Uh, soon to be, probably. So the first time you guys got together and and started playing, you just started jamming on songs that y'all knew. Well, and, 
Simple stuff. Yeah, yeah stuff we could all just follow because we were we were just intending to get together and drink a lot of wine. Yeah, we were really. We did that very well, by the way. <laughs> we uh, thought we'd play like maybe two blues tunes and just. Actually, the first song we ever played was. Uh, he ain't give you none. He ain't give you none. But Van Morrison, but yeah, I don't he know. He stole it from somebody else, he stole though. Something. But we didn't play it like him anyway. So we immediately did, we did uh, that and went into Dixie Chicken, I think, then went into something I made up on the spot called Sunshine, and it was and like Alimony. forty-five minutes. We did one in the Alamo after that. Uh, uh, Alimony too was in there somewhere. Yeah. It was. A, it was. I like, remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> but it just. Yeah, we just. It was like it was like if you were. On a wave, you just didn't want to lose it, so we didn't stop. We just kept, you know, moving. From Except one for the occasional sip of wine. Yeah. No, but it, yeah. So the that first time we got together, we just jammed and, you know, thought it might be an hour or two, and then eight hours later, we were still we're like, holy cow, what happened? And uh, Reggie had to go play with Fess. Yeah, Reggie had to get yeah, with Fess. Yeah, actually, which is a good reason to leave. Well, actually, it was kind of it was interesting for me. It was it was great uh, synchronicity because the my last gig with Fest was the night, the, the day that the radios got together. So I went from one to the next. <laughs> and then the very next time we got together, Ed kind of threw us in the deep end of the pool. He tossed a song he had written out uh, that we still do called Red Dress. And he wrote the face of music and all. And uh, I came up with a guitar riff that seemed to fit very well. And that's kind of how we've been doing it ever since. And, yeah, Red Dress was a little too ambitious, I thought, for the band I was had been in at the time, the Rhapsodizers. And uh, and the five radiators together took it, especially Dave's guitar leg, took, took it to a whole nother level. New Depths. And so, bring us back 33 and a third year. <laughs> So right there, so there, there's a lot of, I hear a lot of skidding back in there. From well, yeah, Little Feet was a huge influence on us. Oh, it's skidding yeah. forward, really, for them. <laughs> So when did you really know that these guys had the medal? I mean, was it after that first jam session that this was going to be? Well, we all were excited, but, but uh, you know, uh, it, I, I did it like a, a protocol thing. You know, it's like, okay, throw, the, throw the, what I think is the most challenging song that I have at what, you know, the potential band, we, we came up with flying callers. I called everybody in Rhapsodize and said, I'm, I'm quitting the band. And I called everybody in Radio and said, I'm starting this band. <laughs> and that's, that's what Dave and I did. And, and Dave and I quit our band the next, you know, and that was it. It took that's us it. that afternoon to quit. It was that instant. Oh, yeah. You just we were knew. excited, man. <laughs> took a lot longer to come up with a name, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> How did the name come up? Same kind of way, we got together in that garage with a bottle of wine and some other stuff, and just <laughs> and bottles of wine have figured prominently in our history. And no, and we were we, we just started, all kind of stupid names. We just for the first started yelling gigs. names out, and after about an hour, we were like, "Man, we got other stuff to do." We were playing <laughs> gigs, and the, the, the clubs would name us. The club would name us. Yeah. We were the Wima Wappas. No, that was we were my name. We should have been. Oh, that, he wanted we really to the wrong. To this day, he gives me shit about name. not going with the Wima. <laughs> we were damn neighborhood boys for a couple of gigs, and but we just we just stopped on it. It's like when the car runs out of gas and stops. We just then we just got on the name. It's like you know what? We'll come back and get a better name later on. But right now we we'll do this, and you know it kind of got kind of didn't need it. You know, it didn't after that. We just default. Didn't but these yeah. were the kind of gigs where you'd pass the hat and you wouldn't even get the hat back. <laughs> yeah, fourth place. We, uh, yeah, our first gig was at four. It was all off-duty taxi cab drivers. They had a gig where it'd be an over and you'd owe the bar $50. <laughs> the first gig we ever played, we sat in on uh, John, John Magnus, uh, Johnny yeah. Zimple, uh, uh, who was playing at Ford's Place, and we sat yeah. in on a break. That was the first time we ever played publicly. Was that around the corner from Tips? Yeah. 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 I still can't find that place. It's not there anymore. It's burnt down. It's not there anymore. <laughs> it's not Katrina there. syndrome. So Ed, you have this, your first album, um, by the way, which celebrates its uh, 
31st anniversary, the recording of it, tomorrow. Wow. 31 years. Woo! 31 years. Worked on our premises, came out. It was recorded May 9th, 1980, at Tipitina's. And... How about that? How about that? Happy birthday, worked on it. And so you have this wellspring of songs that, that appeared on that record and that has appeared in your repertoire really consistently. I mean, how, what, how long have these songs been around? Were they, were they some of the songs Rhapsodizer songs? Were they... Some of them were Rhapsodizer songs. Uh, kind, of, kind of drawing a blank. Maybe not. Actually, no, I don't think any of the ones on that one were, were, were actually Rhapsodizer songs. It was all radiator stuff. I think so. I mean, I think you're just sketching a point. You're not really Suck the head. drawing one. Suck the head of Jigsaw oh, and uh, Automatic. None of those were on that. Worked on the premises. Though. Right. right. Those Did y'all do hardcore? Absolutely. Automatic. Hardcore. That's right. I, I sang hardcore. Hardcore. And That's, That's right. right. That's right. What? <laughs> <laughs> No, so I, I just want, that was over the, the first year or two. I mean, it seems like that was really, uh, you know, th those were some, those were some incredibly fertile days in terms of, in terms of the, how the band was cemented in your songwriting. And Well, if you count the longevity of the songs and staying in irregular rotation, which is every song we do is not in regular rotation, it's in irregular rotation. Because as anyone that has seen us for a three or four night run, we very rarely repeat a song Four hour and a, two hour and a half sets per night gigs, you, there'll be no song repeats. But one of the things about those songs early on is that we were so excited to be in a band where we were actually doing original material and we could we could come up with our own parts because you know it was really, it, it, was, deal. it was really I mean yeah. it just kept you juiced up. I mean you had to keep coming up with new ideas. Yeah. You, had to, you know, and it was all when it was done. It was like, God, this is as good as anything else that's out there. And so, back then, he was really brilliant. <laughs> I only do now what I knew back then. Yeah. Does anything come to mind, Reggie? Does the song stand out? That we're, I mean, is it low life and the bass parts you brought to that? Or well, at, well, the one, well, one.